Is there anything worse than a last second fight cancellation? With the global pandemic raging and some fighters using questionable restraint as it relates to it, we've come to expect a fight day cancellation or two. It's the new normal, and given the UFC's protocols about the virus, it makes sense why it plays out that way. But something altogether more bizarre is when a card starts and a fight gets canceled. Everyone made it through weigh-ins, everybody made it to fight night injury free, they're backstage warming up, and then somehow the MMA gods strike the bout down even though the card has already begun. So today we're going to take a look at 10 times catastrophe struck backstage and forced a fight off the card that was already in progress. I'm Tommy from MMA On Point, and these are 10 fights that got canceled during the event. Number 10, Sean Leffler versus Buddy Roberts. Imagine working 12 years to get into the UFC, 29 pro fights, over a decade of blood, sweat, and tears, all towards this singular goal, and now you're finally going to get the chance, then you injure yourself backstage, and never ever compete for the UFC, ever. That's it, you're done, it's over. <laughs> yeah, it's super messed up, and it happened to Sean Leffler. The Destroyer, awesome nickname, was scheduled to make his debut against Buddy Roberts at UFC on Fuel 1 after going on a six-fight win streak that got the UFC's attention. Leffler was warming up backstage, doing squat jumps to get loose, when he came down from one and his foot got caught in the space between the two warm-up mats. The landing was met with a snap, crackle, pop that was unfortunately not from someone pouring milk on Rice Krispies. Instantly, his ankle swelled up massively, but the fighter had come too far and kept on warming up like he wasn't walking around with a gallon of fluid sloshing around just above his foot. Despite numerous doctors asking him if he was in pain, he was in severe pain, he pretended he was totally fine, like a boss, until he rolled his ankle a second time, causing him to collapse and scream out in pain. The doctors had seen enough. The fight was off, and Sean was taken to the hospital. His bout has the unique distinction of being the first ever of the Zufa era to be cancelled mid-show. A small consolation for having his dreams shattered, I'm sure. Number 9. Tom Breeze vs. Aluale Bamboche Right before the broadcast would officially begin for Fight Night 107, live from the O2 in London on Fight Pass, Bruce Buffer let the crowd know that English standout Tom Breeze would not be competing on the prelims as expected. The broadcast would open up with the news as well. Breeze was 10-1 coming off his only loss in the promotion against Sean Strickland when he was paired up with 6-2 Aluale Bamboche, who was also coming off a loss. Backstage, Breeze's heart rate was through the roof for no apparent reason, a concern when you're about to participate in an athletic endeavor. Breeze himself voiced his concern to his team and believed he wasn't in a condition to compete. It's not entirely clear what happened next. The UFC website wrote a piece before Breeze's next fight where he said he felt sick, but you have to be smarter with your decisions when you're in the UFC, making it seem as if he voluntarily pulled out at the beginning of the card. But the next part of the article says Tom hasn't suffered any long-term damage from the health scare. Whatever the hell happened backstage or whoever made the decision, the fight was canceled right as the broadcast began and the two would not be rescheduled. Tom most recently fought at UFC on ABC One. Number 8. Jimmy Hedis vs. Diego Brandau we have some conflicting reports about what happened backstage during the event on this entry, but they're both pretty scary. I can definitely see why the fight was canceled. Jimmy Hedis was set to take on Diego Brandau at UFC 183. Hedis was coming off a TKO loss to Dennis Bermudez and Brandau a TKO loss to Conor McGregor for some context about where we are in the featherweight timeline. In one account, while the commission was applying Jimmy's wraps, his hands started to twitch. Apparently, the twitching was so bizarre that a doctor was called in to take a look and Hedis was advised to go to the hospital to have a CAT scan. Not exactly what anyone would want to hear, let alone a professional fighter. The other account has Jimmy passing out, and according to Dana White, remaining unconscious for 10 seconds. Now, in this story, White says the doctors okay him, but the commission says no to him competing on the prelims as scheduled. We do know that Hedis was transported to the hospital, so if the doctors had cleared him to fight, not sure why that would have been necessary. Whatever happened, it wasn't good. Luckily, Jimmy was okay and fought Brandau a few months later at UFC on Fox 15. Number 7. Alessio Sakara versus Jorge Rivera Alessio Sakara and Jorge Rivera were making some noise in the UFC's middleweight division. They were both on three-fight win streaks in the promotion, right on the cusp of some bigger fights. A perfect time to match them up and see who should advance. Originally scheduled for UFC 118, the fight would be delayed after Rivera was injured in training camp. Sakara would go on to take a replacement bout, but he injured himself as well, and so the pair were rebooked in the co-main event slot of UFC 122 from Germany on Spike TV tape delay. Believe it or not, this card, which was headlined by Yushin Okami versus Nate Marquardt, and 
and lost its co-main events during the card did better ratings for Spike than UFC 120, which was tape delayed from London, but featured Bisbean vs. Sexyama and Kanda vs. Hardy. Absolute madness. But I digress. Alessio Sakara showed up on Fight Night with flu-like symptoms. He was in a bad way backstage, but decided he was going to just power through it. Hey, Michael Jordan had one of the best games of his career with the flu. Then during the first fight on the main card, he vomited backstage, and that was apparently the last straw for the UFC. That must have been some throw up. They told Sakara to go home and eat some soup, probably. The fight was canceled. The bout wouldn't be rescheduled a third time, and the pair would both lose their next bout. Number six, Stefan Struve versus Matt Mitrione. UFC 175 was set to have a top 15 heavyweight feature bout between Matt Mitrione and a returning Stefan Struve. The skyscraper was diagnosed with a leaking aortic valve and enlarged heart in August of 2013, leaving the continuation of his MMA career up in the air. However, eight months later, Struve would be medically cleared to compete again and paired up with Mitrione. Following the first bout on the main card, it was announced on the broadcast that the clash of heavyweights was unfortunately canceled due to concerns over Struve's health after a, quote, near fainting incident backstage. As Struve was warming up, he explained that he had been feeling particularly uneasy, but chalked it up to nerves over his return and the recent death of his father. However, when Stefan collapsed, EMS workers determined he had an irregularly elevated heart rate, and given his recent history, it was determined that he should be transported to the hospital as a precautionary measure. Believed to have been triggered by an anxiety attack, Stefan would be released and cleared to compete again whenever he was ready. He would eventually make his return that December at UFC on Fox 13 against Alistair Overeem. Number 5. Trevin Giles vs. Kevin Holland 2020 was an insane year in mixed martial arts. Despite that, there may not have been anybody hotter than Kevin Holland coming out of it after he scored five straight UFC wins starting in May. One of his scheduled bouts would be canceled right before walkouts, though. UFC Vegas 5 would see Holland up against Trevin Giles, who had a fight of the night in his previous bout at UFC 247 against coach fighter James Krause. As Giles tells the story, he was bouncing around backstage getting ready to make the walk, and then the next thing he remembers is his coaches asking him if he's all right as he lays on the floor. The fight was already off, of course, at that point, but EMS workers noticed some irregularities in Trevin's heart rhythm, and so he was transported to the hospital. Turns out his heart was stopping from time to time. Giles said he wasn't even aware of the issue, as he was talking to his coaches when doctors informed him that his heart hadn't been beating for several moments. This weirdness would luckily stop after a few days, and Giles would be dismissed having no issues since. Perhaps it was a good thing he passed out, though. I'm not sure having your heart stopping during an MMA bout is ideal. Holland would fight on the next week's card, because of course he did. Giles competed and won just a few months later against Bevan Lewis. Number 4. Jamal Emmers vs. Chaz Skelly our next entry has the notable distinction of being the only time in UFC history a fighter was literally waiting in the cage for his opponent when a bout was called off. At UFC Vegas 19 earlier this year, Chaz Skelly and Jamal Emmers were set to duke it out at featherweight. It was Skelly's first bout since 2019. For Emmers, his first of 2021, he'd competed twice for the promotion the year prior. But after Chaz had his walkout, there was a bit of a pause in the show. Skelly's walkout music kept playing, and then the commentary team explained that moments before the walkout, Emmers had suffered severe back spasms and would be unable able to compete. Then Joe Martinez announced to zero people in attendance that the fight was canceled, to the confusion and disappointment of Chaz, who was still hopping around getting loose when the announcement was made. Luis Pena, who had a bout canceled just hours before the event, offered to step in, but that's not how any of this works, and so Skelly left the cage, did a post-cancellation interview to fill some broadcast time, and then the show moved on. Chaz was hoping to get his win money given that he made it into the cage, but it would appear show cash was all he got. He did seem in good spirits backstage, though. In fact, some Sometimes that's not right. The bout hasn't been rescheduled, nor has either fighter been booked in any other fights. Number 3. Seth Petruzzelli vs. Aaron Rosa it's possibly the most famous prelim fight that never happened. Of course, nobody cared about the light heavyweight matchup between Aaron Rosa versus Seth Petrozelli at Elite XC Heat. The bout wasn't even going to be televised. Petrozelli had been cut from the UFC over a year prior, and Rosa had dropped two straight at back-to-back -back Show XC cards. So why the hell are we talking about this nothing fight? Why is it number three on this list? Because its cancellation would lead to one of the most infamous moments in MMA history. Seth Petrozelli KOing Kimbo Slice live on CBS and completely tanking Elite XC in the process. A few hours before the card, Ken Shamrock bizarrely decided to get a roll in and was headbutted by his coach, opening up a cut just above the eye that would require double stitches. I don't know what double stitches are, but it doesn't sound good. Now, if you are conspiratorially minded, you might believe that this was no accident. Shamrock was tanking the show after Andre Arlovsky was added to it at the last minute, a fighter making more money than him, something he was very upset about. Or he just got headbutted while rolling. Either way, the fight was off and the Elite XC execs were in a frenzied panic 
panic. The show had already begun, and they just lost their main event. The only reason anybody was tuning in while waiting to walk out, gloves on and fully warmed up, Petrozelli was told he would now be in the main event against Kimbo Slice. The crowd in attendance was informed, and the CBS broadcast would start with backstage interviews explaining the situation. Crisis averted, until Petrozelli KO'd Kimbo and destroyed the promotion. Number 2. Kevin Randleman vs. Pedro Hizzo a UFC heavyweight title fight pay-per-view main event canceled during the card. Can you imagine such a nightmare today? Luckily, this horror story takes place during the Dark Ages, so probably like 5,000 people got screwed, and I'm being generous there. UFC 24 from the beautiful Lake Charles Civic Center in Lake Charles, Louisiana, was headlined by the newly crowned heavyweight champion Kevin Randleman taking on the undefeated Pedro Hizzo, a hell of a headliner for March of 2000. It was also really the only draw on the card, as the Dark Ages could be slim pickings. While warming up backstage in an incident that has never fully been explained, probably because of the concussion, Randleman would slip somehow and hit his head on the concrete floor. The most popular explanation being errant pipes, even though that makes very little sense. Was he warming up in the boiler room? Whatever the case, Kevin was in a bad way. During this time period, you might think everyone involved would say, oh, he got his bell rung, he'll be fine, go on, get on out there. But Randleman began vomiting after he regained consciousness and was rushed to the hospital. The UFC didn't bother telling the fans in attendance until the show was over, but did at least mention on the broadcast that your new main event would be Ted Williams versus Steve Judson. Pay-per-view providers refused to offer replays of the disaster event. The bout was rescheduled and took place at UFC 26. Number 1. Heath Herring versus Yoshihiro Nakao the latest the fight can be cancelled is literally seconds before it starts, so of course Heath Herring vs. Yoshihiro Nakao is going to be number one on our list. Not to mention it's just utter insanity. The fight was set to take place on the big 2005 New Year's Eve show for K1 Premium Dynamite. Herring had lost two of his last three, but was a well-known commodity having fought in the stacked Pride Heavyweight division for the first half of the 2000s, even competing against Big Nog in a title fight at Pride 17. Nakao, an up-and-coming talent, he was 4-0 with a win over Don Fry at the last New Year's Eve card. I'm guessing he had no idea what was about to happen would be his only claim to fame. During the traditional stare-down in the middle of the ring as the referee was explaining the rules both fighters already know, Yoshihiro decided to plant a tiny little kiss on Heath's lips to psych him out. Effective. Too effective, actually, as Herring unleashed what appeared to be the weakest, yet most devastating right hook in MMA history. Nakao was out. Like, dead out. They would carry him from the ring on a stretcher, and as they were laying him on it, he's not moving at all. Herring then pleaded with the crowd and officials, explaining that he was kissed, adamantly declaring his heterosexuality. Despite the fact that the fight had not actually started, K1 decided to rule the altercation a DQ loss for Herring, which would then be turned into a no contest after they determined the kiss too was a foul. The bout was never rescheduled. A big ol' shout out to my dude Luke Taylor for editing this video together. You can find him and his awesome digital art on Twitter at cool to me underscore. A big, big thank you to Ben Rosette, who provided that sweet tune you heard in the intro. Check out his music by clicking the link in the description and go give him a follow on his Instagram and Twitter page at Ben Rosette. Thanks for watching. Please give us a like and subscribe. We've got three new videos or more for you every single week. Let us know what you thought of the video in the comments below. Follow On Point MMA on Twitter and have yourself a wonderful day.